Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice quartic equation. We have x to the fourth power plus x plus one to the fourth power equals one. And we're going to be solving for x values, real and complex for all of them, okay? So how many real solutions do you think this equation is gonna have? Make a guess. Are there any real solutions at all? Because a quartic equation does not have to have real solutions, right? Because it's an even power. So to be able to solve this equation, I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm gonna go ahead and expand x plus one to the fourth power by using the binomial theorem. If you remember the Pascal's triangle, the fourth row is one, four, six, four, one. Those are gonna be the coefficients. In other words, the combinatorial coefficients. So we're gonna get x to the fourth plus four x cubed plus six x squared plus four x plus one, and that's equal to one. Uh-oh. It's good to have one on both sides, right? Because that's gonna cancel out. Good. Now let's go ahead and cancel that out and proceed with the rest. This is gonna give us two x to the fourth plus four x cubed plus six x squared plus four x equals zero. Great. Now, our quartic equation is actually going to turn into a cubic equation. You know why? Because we can factor out x. We can even factor out 2x, but that's not going to make a difference in terms of finding the solution. So let's go ahead and factor out 2x. That gives us x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 2, and that's equal to 0. Nice. First of all, from here, we immediately get that x is equal to zero because two x equals zero means x is equal to zero. So we have now a cubic equation that we need to solve. How do we solve that? Good question. You could use the cubic formula. There's probably another way to do it. I think something like x equals, uh, you replace x with something like y plus one over y. And then it kind of gives you something good. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but the method that I usually use, the method that I know, involves getting rid of the quadratic term. So in this particular scenario, I would replace x with something like, let's just use u, uh, u minus two thirds, because the coefficient of x squared basically dictates what number you're gonna use in the numerator, and the denominator is the power or the degree, and of course you have to negate the number. You have to put a minus sign if that's a plus sign. You get the idea? Fairly easy to do, plug it in and you'll get a depressed cubic, and to get solve the depressed cubic, you can go ahead and use the following formula, okay? And this is an identity that we use in algebra. You could probably easily, you know, verify that. And if you set a plus b equal to x, or in this case, that will be u, uh, then you'll get an equation, uh, one of whose solutions is a plus b. And then you can find a and b and just add them up to find u, okay? So that would be the method that I would be using if I proceeded with the solution. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you and please let me know what you find because I'd like to proceed with the second method. I think second method is better, but again, it's totally up to you. Let me know what you think. Your opinion matters, okay? So for our second method, what do you think we're gonna do? We're gonna use a very nice method, which is kind of like a really cool trick that is often used with these kinds of equations. So whenever you have something like uh, trying to typify these equations, x plus a, oops, I was supposed to write fourth power, x plus a to the fourth and x plus b to the fourth, what we do is we average these two terms. And when we average them, we just add them up and divide by two. And of course that gives us x plus average of a and b. Makes sense, right? So what's in the middle of a and b, a plus b divided by two. So that's what we're gonna do here, and I'll show you why that's a good thing to do, but I, at least I gave you the formula, the method. So here's how we can apply it. What is the average of x and x plus one? Let's find out. 
you're going to add them and divide by 2. This will be 2x plus 1 divided by 2. And you can easily write this as x plus 1 half. So x plus 1 half is very critical to this equation because it's in the middle of x and x plus 1. It's the average. And it needs to equal to some variable. Which variable should I use? I already used the u and the y for the first method. So I kind of need to use another one, don't you think? Let's go ahead and set this equal to t. Because t is one of my favorite variables. Also, one of my favorite drinks. So, what does it mean to replace x plus 1 half with t? We don't have it in the equation. Well, you do, actually, indirectly. So, this means that you're going to replace x with t minus 1 half. Make sense? Because you have x in, the, x in the equation. So, let's go ahead and do it in two places. Make sense? So, replace x with t minus 1 half, raise it to the fourth power, and then here replace x with t minus 1 half, and don't forget the plus 1, and then raise it to the fourth power and set that equal to 1. Now, why is this important? Why is this helpful? You'll see. Let's simplify the second expression. That gives us t plus 1 half to the fourth power, hence the symmetry. Sorry, that's not a 0, that's a 1. Now, notice that from here, a lot of terms are going to cancel out. Nice, right? That's the whole idea because as is, it doesn't simplify nicely, but we can make it do so. So let's go ahead and expand it again. You know the formula. I'm going to do it in two rows. So the first one is going to be t to the fourth minus, notice that the signs will alternate here. And now you're going to have 14641. Let me write it here for easy reference, right? Pascal strangle. And that's going to be 4. Now, you've got to be careful because these are powers of t, but you have to multiply by increasing or ascending powers of 1 half. And then 6t squared multiplied by 1 fourth minus, minus 4 times t multiplied by 1 half to the third power, which is 1 eighth. Finally, 1 over 16, which is 1 half to the fourth power. Notice that it's plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And the second one is the same thing with all pluses. And what we can do is you don't even have to simplify this yet because some terms are going to cancel out. Let's do that first and then we'll clear it up. Now we have these two expressions from here. We're going to go ahead and add them up. When we do, these terms are going to cancel. These terms are going to cancel. We're going to end up with 2t to the fourth plus. This is 3 halves, by the way, so that's going to give us 3t squared. And these two are going to give me 2 over 16 or 1 over 8 equals 0. Well, this equation is quartic, but it's a biquadratic, so we can easily make a substitution. Set t squared equal to m, something that we didn't use, right? And that gives us 2m squared plus 3m plus 1 eighth equals 0. And with the quadratic formula, you can easily, easily solve it. m is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's 4 times 2 times 1 eighth, which is nice because of... This is 1, and 9 minus 1 is 8, and that's going to be negative 3 plus minus 2 root 2 divided by 4. That will be m. But m is t squared. You've got to be very careful here because negative 3 minus 2 root 2 does not have a square root. Uh-oh, that's very interesting, right? So we're going to get some complex solutions from here, which I'm going to show you. But after finding the t values from here, from this equation, you should go for the x value and it just have to subtract one half from it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results, numerical results, because solving that equation is going to be fairly easy. First of all, notice that this graph, which is the cortic, is intersected by a horizontal line at two different points. As you can see here, one of them is x equals zero. Obviously, that's the solution. You probably knew that, right? Did you? I don't know. I didn't realize. And the other one seems to be negative one from symmetry. But if you look at all the solutions, tada, they're all on the complex plane. And as you can see, two of them are non-real. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.